All right, everybody, let's talk about improving short-term memory. This is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com and really excited because I put a lot of thought into short-term memory and exercises you could do, what it is, can you really improve it, and I really think you can. So if you're joining us in the uh, chat, let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, and... Uh, uh, any questions that you have. Now, about today's live stream, we do have some questions here, but we'll get to them later. Thank you for everyone who supplied them in advance in the uh, community tab area. Really appreciate that. And uh, like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, we're going to talk about an actual means of improving short-term memory, give you some examples of short-term memory at work when it has been improved, what that means, then think about it in terms of how we can have better short-term memory in conversations, in reading, and all sorts of areas where actually understanding what short-term memory is and then understanding what it isn't and then understanding how we can improve our concentration and our attention, how that can all really help us a great deal. And so we also have your questions and answers. Werner is in Toronto. Hadi says hello. Jason is in Florida. Thank you, everybody, for saying hello. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing. Hit the thumbs up, and uh, let's uh, let's dive into a great session. And these are better with your interaction. That's why we do it live. Otherwise, it can be a uh, it can be a uh, you know other thing. So this is about engagement. Don't feel uh, like you have to wait to post your questions. We'll get to them. And uh, Thanks, uh, even if you're just popping in to say hello, like Jason, and saying uh, goodbye. And he says he'll be back when he's finished with his drawings. Excellent, excellent. So again, we've got these questions coming up, and I really want to thank uh, Kushal and Naptime Gaming and Sevink for posting them, and uh, we'll get to them a little bit later. And in some sense, we'll be covering each and every one of them as we go along anyway. But I want to just pause on Kushal's question here for a second because he's asking for how can we visualize difficult texts like reactions in chemistry and make it last and says please explain and guide me about it so one of the things if you happen to be here kushal and uh, if not anybody you want to um provide specific examples because i have no idea what a reaction in chemistry is that you're referring to so when you ask for help like this you got to be specific otherwise you know the answer is create a memory palace make sure you know the major if numbers are involved make sure you know the rules of association we can't really speak specifically without uh, any sort of specific example so this is of course a service for the public and one of the things that makes uh, sense in order to serve is you meeting uh, me halfway by putting some very, very specific examples on the table. Otherwise, we can just only speak in generalities. And the general thing is to get the free course at magneticmerrymethod.com. If you don't have this course yet, I encourage you to make sure that you get it. And I'll be posting the link for you in the chat. It's in the description. There's a couple other resources in the description section for you to follow up the suggestions that we're making here. But uh, you definitely want to get the free course at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT if you haven't yet. Saksham asks, cramming for finals in India, any tips to help memorizing facts? Yes. And Saksham, thank you for that. Same principle applies. What is a fact that you need to memorize? Let's get some specifics going so that we can work with specifics rather than generalities because generally, the biggest tip I can give you, take the free course, learn how to use a memory palace network not just memory, uh, a memory palace, but a network of them, and then learn how to encode and learn how to decode so it gets into long-term memory. And so that is, the, that is the tip. But unless we know exactly what we're talking about, can't go deeper than that. So pop in to the chat any specific facts you want to talk about. And let's get started by defining short-term memory. So there's a difference between short-term memory, working memory, long-term memory, and this is a really, really uh, somewhat unnecessary knowledge if you just want to learn how to improve your memory. You can just dive into the techniques. But 
it's very, very interesting. We'll be talking about working memory in the future, long-term memory in the future for those who are interested. Hello to Cat Satan. Haven't seen you for a long time. Uh, <laughs> really good to see your name again. As you know, I love that handle. It is very appropriate to the memory technique world. Um, but we don't want to get bogged down in this terminology, but we do want to define short-term memory at least if we're going to improve it. And then we can think about, is there a difference between short-term memory and working memory? And how does it relate to long-term memory? So short-term memory is essentially a lot of things, but to keep it really simple, it's an ability to understand sentences spoken and written. So for example, you in your mind, even if you're consciously aware of it, you'll need to have some ability to process the beginning of the sentence that I just started so that you can comprehend the end. So short-term memory is in involved in this, in comprehension. Uh, it's the ability to remember a couple of numbers. So if someone says, you know, their phone number, 738-4267, you know, you're going to have a general ability to just juggle that amount of information in your mind. And that's essentially what short-term memory is. Uh, and it is something that is the fault that when we, you know, are at a, at a party or at an event and we forget the names of people, because of new incoming information, new stimulus, sounds around the room, maybe the lights are flashing or whatever's going on, that name comes and then it's gone, right? And so something about short-term memory is involved in the fact that we can't pay attention for too long or we get interrupted very, very quickly. And so we need to um, see in order to get a solution how that short-term memory is somehow part of why we don't remember certain things. So why is it that we can remember, you know, a number of numbers in, in a certain situation, a certain setting, but we can't remember someone's name for a few seconds? It's partly because what short-term memory is, is this comprehension uh, tool. And so when we are at a party, we meet a new person and they say their name is Robert or whatever, already we're hearing so many sounds, we're anticipating what we're going to say next in the conversation and so forth. So we have a lot of competition in our memory uh, space there. And uh, this is very, very important to understand that we have limitations there. Uh, Saksham says formulas in biology. Great. Specific examples of facts in biology, specific formulas, pop them in, take advantage of this opportunity and, uh, you know, we'll see uh, what you got. Now, here's the thing about short-term memory. We're going to improve them all by improving, or we're going to improve short-term memory by improving all of memory. And what we want to do is tap into as much of our memory uh, types, kinds, genres of memory as we have. So autobiographical, episodic, figural, procedural, semantic, spatial memory. There's probably more, but we're going to do this in order to have a comprehensive improvement instead of focusing on the one. And we are going to talk about short-term memory improvement exercises that really are about this short-term memory uh, that we've talked about. But ultimately, the real gains are going to come from a comprehensive improvement of all the kinds of memory. And the best way to do that, of course, is memory palaces that are used in a network with all of the magnetic modes involved in your association. So, Werner says, I have been hesitant practicing my memory palaces because I don't want to use them up and thus can't use it for real stuff I need to memorize. How long does it take to erase previous stuff? Great question. Thanks for that. Here's the thing. Try to get over that hesitancy because you can't use them up. It's not how it works. And you need to be creating more and more memory palaces. Now, why can you not ever use them up? It's because you can reuse them. Now, I tend to find that it's an intermediate skill for most people in my experience working with them, which is one of the reasons why I stress just keep getting new memory palaces and keep using those memory palaces. And one of the things that you can do is just let them stay and let them empty themselves on their own accord. Now, to answer how long does it take, <laughs> it could take two seconds if you know what you're doing, or you can just understand something called the ugly sister effect and actually use that pre-existing material as a benefit. Uh, if you'd like, I'll post the link to the ugly sister effect so you can learn more about how that all works. 
There's also an interview on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast with Idris Sogai, where we talk about cleaning memory palaces, some tips around that. So I'm happy to dig up that link for you now, or you can just search uh, magneticmerrymethod.com and Idris Sogai. Um, wow, Christian is wearing his magnetic t-shirt now. You know, we've got a picture of that coming up. Uh, excellent, excellent. Good to see you, Christian. Magnetic merriment to you as well. And... Uh, uh, so I hope uh, it's just great to see it. Thank you. <laughs> um, and thanks for getting that shirt. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. I hope that's answering your question, Werner. Basically, the end of the day is, is that you shouldn't hesitate to use your memory palaces. You need to use them. You need to learn how to do this. And if you have what's called memory palace scarcity in the way, you're, you're just making it a longer journey than it needs to be. You have an endless capacity for memorizing millions of locations, literally millions. I, I, no one is going to live long enough to memorize millions, but the idea that you would go to a new hotel, a new restaurant, a new library, a new bookstore, and not be able to remember it is ridiculous unless you have some sort of brain trauma or dementia or Alzheimer's, right? You can always add more memory palaces. To this day, I've been living here for two years in this neighborhood. To this day, I haven't even tapped out this neighborhood for memory palaces. There's restaurants I haven't been into. There are um, uh, all kinds of offices where I could just go into the lobby, press one on the elevator, walk around the first floor, new memory palace. And there are eight-story eight buildings, 10-story buildings. I don't know. I haven't counted them, right? I could go to the real estate agent and just be like, Hey, I'm looking for a new uh, house. I got uh, I got a budget of seven million. You know, could you take me around the town? <laughs> like everybody can get more memory palaces, so there's nothing to worry about. Don't fall into memory palace scarcity. It is the killer of progress. You can't use them up. Then, if you want to reuse them, there's lots and lots of discussions to be had. But please uh, get into that after you have maybe 26 memory palaces at least in play and that you've used them. Then you start to have interesting issues and problems, but not beforehand. Uh, and incidentally, all of that practice of creating and discovering and finding and making new memory palaces will work with your short-term memory. So Werner says that that is good. Thanks. Okay. So I don't know if yes, thanks means yes, post the links or not, but uh, let's uh, wait for that. And Cat Satan asks, can I use different paintings as different stations in a memory palace. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's a very interesting technique, uh, actually. And the Mona Lisa and uh, Bosch and uh, the Triumph of Death, which was Bruegel. Mm, I've got some. I've got some. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Great question, Cat Satan. Uh, all right. So Werner says affirmative to the links. So, what did I say? Ugly sister effect? I'd love to serve, love to serve. Um, so, the ugly sister effect, so called, because it is um, Cinderella, you know, the prince wants Cinderella, and he's asking for her hand in marriage, and he keeps getting an ugly sister. And so when you're in your memory palaces and you're running into these images that you don't want, um, <laughs> you've got uh, these ugly sisters coming up. But a lot of people turn them into problem. They're not a problem. They're actually the miraculous sign that your memory techniques are working. And so I don't think that cleaning them up is necessarily the best thing to do. However, Idris Zogai and I go through it in that interview. So now you got the links to The Ugly Sister and you got the link to uh, the interview with Idris Zogai. And you know, there's more Alex, I think, and Mullen and I perhaps talked about it. Um, f again, if you're a competitor, it's one thing. If you're, if you're not, I don't think it's worth cleaning them up because what you want to do is, uh, is you want to understand first that this is a miracle and that those are probably assets that you can use and reuse because they're existing. Arasaz is here. Hello, Arasaz. Thanks for saying hello. And uh, Saksham says, how to put formulas and value in mind palaces. Saksham, here's a repetition of what I said before. 
If you don't put exact specific examples, the answer is take the free course, learn how to use Memory Palace Network and uh, um, learn the major in your case and learn how to associate. Without a specific formula, there's nothing we can do here. Uh, Mr. Space is here. Good to see you, Mr. Space. All right, so uh, Marichella, good to see Marichella joining us from Facebook. All right. Okay, so again, to improve one of these things is to improve all of them, right? So short-term memory, you want to improve memory comprehensively, and you want to do uh, this comprehensively. And the more you can access all the levels uh, of autobiographical, spatial, and episodic, and figural, and procedural in two to three seconds, the more you can experience better short-term memory, essentially, because you're going to transcend the textbook definitions. So the textbook definition tells us that you can only hold five to seven or five to eight digits at, at once, right? That's what it says. Really? What about Alex Mullen with uh, memorizing decks of cards so quickly? What is that telling us? It's telling us that short-term memory actually can be changed. It can be trained and it can, with specific tools and techniques, be transcended. And so if, if you could do that with playing cards, you could do it where you can memorize lots of names. I've been in rooms where I've memorized 20, 30 names in uh, as fast as it took to hear them. And it's because I've somehow transcended this rule that you can only hold two to th or five to eight digits in your mind or whatever at a time. And how it works is essentially having a memory palace very, very rapidly creating images that tap into all of these different representation centers of the mind like that. And then you're able to hold them in short-term memory and process them in short-term memory so that they enter long-term memory like that. And then you are able to actually use all these tools and go back through space and recover what was there. And if you're a learner of big projects, you're able to do this. So one example is, of course, the memory competitors. And Alex Mullen is great to look at. Uh, Nelson Dellis is great to look at. And, uh, of course, uh, Tenzel Ali, great to look at. And you absolutely, absolutely want to um, follow up on all those podcasts and uh, give them a share when you're there. If you appreciate this content, help other humans know and uh, do that by sharing them around. That would be awesome. And uh, wake up because the internet is starting to be ruled by corporate interests that, uh, you know, we humans need to fight back with our interaction. All right, let's see in the chat here. Saksham, yes, finally, something we can do something with here. All right, so K is a constant. Um, so assuming you got a memory palace, right? Uh, you start to think about what do I know with K? So special K used to be something that the druggies called ketamine. And uh, now I'm thinking, who's a real ketamine kind of freak? And maybe I'm thinking of, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, some, somebody who's coming to mind who I'm not going to mention to protect the identity of the innocent who did a lot of special K. <laughs> okay. And uh, so, and he's constantly doing it, right? Now, 8.99 times 1,009, uh, that is... So we would have um, 0, 08 is Shiva, 99 is the Pope. Uh, we would just have him with a, a cross. And then 10 is the uh, don't tase me, bro. And 9 is Brad Zup. So now we got Shiva, who is maybe throwing the Pope as a time symbol at uh, the tase me, bro, who is then tasing Brad Zup because he's my 0, 09. That's how you would do that. Hope that helps you out, Saksham. Thank you for an actual specific example. That's how I would do it, though. Understand, you need those skills of being able to look at numbers, or first of all, look at K as a constant. Think, hey, who do I know who did something with, with K, right? Or maybe you have a friend named Kathleen. I have a friend named Kathleen, uh, for example. Uh, maybe you ate a lot of Special K when you were a kid. I don't know. Um, Special K for me always refers to ketamine, but I think it was actually a cereal. Um, I think there's a store called Circle K. I don't know. There's endless examples of what you could do with the letter K. The more you practice this, the more ideas will just come, 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 right? Uh, maybe you think about the concept of karma. Uh, maybe you hear Karma Chameleon, the, the, the song. Um, 
whatever, endless sort of things. The more you practice, the more you'll get it. The idea of constant, you know, um, maybe you would see Lake Constance in uh, Germany. I don't know, whatever. And then if you have your major down and you're zero, zero to 99, it's instant. Shiva, uh, the Pope, and the Taze Me Bro, and Brad's up. Boom, boom, boom. So if you do that, then you effectively encode it into a memory palace. You can go and you can revisit it. Cat Satan says there's an anime which is called K. Exactly. So the more you really think through this, you do the exercises, you're going to be able to, um, you're going to be able to have a powerful, powerful entrance into the technique and just line these images up as fast as I just did. And you know what? There are probably people who can do it a lot faster than me, but I sure like to uh, do it that fast. Now, the thing that's going to make the game changer is that, of course, that I actually have the proper Memory Palace network set up for more uh, information related to your topic section, and then I'm going to go and, and do the proper due diligence of recall rehearsal and uh, the big five of learning in order to do that. So thanks for that. Let's check in with our chats here. Brian says, thanks for get, helping us get started. You're very welcome, Brian. Uh, thanks for saying hello. If you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let me know in the chat where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Um, Mr. Space says, I like the new style of your live streaming. Thank you, Mr. Space, for noticing. Uh, I'm going to uh, you know, still tweak it here and there. It's a little bit, feel a little bit cluttered in space, but uh, this is looking better and uh love to uh see you all participating and let me know if the audio is fine they said the last time the audio wasn't that great and there was something with the replay not playing properly but uh we still have such blessings with this technology don't you think all right so cat satan asks what's the role of meditation in memory improving does it have any role in it absolutely in fact, I'm almost done. In four days, I need to submit the draft of my new book all about meditation and memory training to uh, an editor. And the role is that there's a couple of things. One of the things is that I think that memory training, and I'm arguing this in the book, sitting down and memory training is meditation. It taps into very similar parts of the brain. It creates similar kinds of neuroplasticity and presence and mindfulness. So there's that. And uh, also, you can relax yourself with such ease if you do a bit of meditation before that you encode or decode. And uh, I don't know if you saw it, Mr. Space, but I did a whole live stream where I recited 32 verses of Sanskrit that I memorized. And that's another way that has that you can apply meditation to uh, memory training is by memorizing long text and that's a pretty substantial amount uh, it, it it seems like more than it is because there's a lot of repetition but those repetitions and near repetitions presented a lot of challenges and I think that without the meditation element I would have gotten too frustrated with those challenges so um, uh, that's something that meditation does is it helps you not get frustrated when there's, when there's a, a challenge to become, and you know, you've heard me talk about the challenge frustration curve before, so we won't go into it now, but that's pretty, uh, pretty important. Thanks for everybody pumping in your questions. We're going to get to them all. Thank you very much and keep them coming. And, uh, Rash says, hi from France. Thanks for this interesting subject. One word about neurogenesis. Feel free to pop your word about neurogenesis in. Uh, Christoph from Poland. Thanks for saying hello, Christoph. Great to see you. Great. So um, here's the thing, though. I shared you uh, examples or gave examples of some memory competitors. I mentioned Alex Mullen, Nelson Dellis, um, Tenzel Ali. There's many, many others. John Graham uh, uh, should have had his uh, picture up there as well. Um, Many, many people have been on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. If you want to learn from them, please uh, take the opportunity to listen to those episodes. And uh, um, what can I say? Uh, you've got to think about, is it really short-term memory improvement when you can memorize a deck of cards? Um, and are the scientific terms that we were talking about here really that useful? Uh, and the answer is that no, it's not really that useful because cards and um, let's see here, 
cards and names and abstract images, these are largely being translated into uh, something more like short-term memory into mid-term competition memory. And so what we want to think about is how that for most people, a holistic comprehensive memory training is needed for one kind of memory, and that's long-term memory with predictable recall. So what we want to focus on is how to get this outcome. I'm going to get to all these wonderful questions in a minute here, but uh, the, this is really, really important to understand. Holistic comprehensive memory training is what is needed. And in order to get long-term predictable recall, I'm going to give you a number of suggestions about exactly how to do this, how to exercise what we think of as short-term memory so that you can get long-term predictable recall. So we're going to want to have our spatial memory very, very well uh, exercised. We're going to want to have elaborative coding, which I call magnetic imagery. You can call it mnemonic imagery as well. We're going to want to have that sharpened. So I gave uh, an example there earlier, and uh, I could probably recall what it was. It was K is a constant, and then it was 899 times um, 10, 9, something like that, or it's something like that. I think that was pretty good, actually. Let me look back. <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, what was it? Um, I can't find it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I think that was pretty good. I think I maybe missed one. But um, the idea is, is that whatever short-term memory is, the fact that I could recall most of that is a demonstration of uh, transcending this. And it's a demonstration of spatial memory because I actually wrote that into a memory palace as I was encoding it. It is elaborative encoding, and I shared with you what images I was just coming up with. Would those have been the images if I really wanted to memorize that? Probably, because the 00 to 99 is true. But I might have worked more on the special uh, constant. Um, so Cat Satan says, K is a constant 899 times 109. So... I don't know. Did I get it right? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I do care uh, in, in some sense, but at the end of the day, the, um, the point is, is that you can do this. You can transcend and you can, you can make your short-term memory stronger. And we're going to talk about how to do that. And if I wanted to be able to remember tomorrow or next week or three months from now, then I'm going to need to do creative repetition, also called recall rehearsal, but not SRS, not relegating it to a device. That's just simply not necessary. Um, so one of the things that we want to consider is that uh, brain games and apps and stuff like that, they might actually ha improve some aspects of our mental cognition, but not in any useful way and not without personal training. So there's an interview with Christine Till on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast, and uh, uh, she talks about how CogMed definitely needed in order to get any results for people, human coaches at the end. So you would use the software, but then you would follow up with human coaches. And that makes a lot of sense to me uh, because you might just get some general benefit from using these devices or SRS, but without a human follow-up, you're not going to get anywhere. It's the same way with uh, language learning apps. Yeah, you'll get some pattern recognition. Maybe you'll get some general stuff into your memory, but if you're not speaking with human uh, people, um, you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, so the ultimate sort of app for this is uh, something we'll talk about a different time. But um, in any case, I want to keep that uh, in mind. And generally just get off the apps, not more into them, turn off the TV, and write a story. This is one way that you can actually improve your short-term memory, believe it or not. Why? Because you're going to manage the details of your own imagination. Remember we said earlier that short-term memory is what helps you remember enough of the beginning of the sentence I just started so that you can comprehend what I'm saying in this part of the sentence now, right? Well, writing is one way of you managing more details in your own head. And so I don't know exactly that this is going to improve short-term memory in some scientific way, but it makes a lot of sense when you just look at what short-term memory is. And so uh, one of the things that, you know, 
authors tend to have is a very, very detailed understanding of their own fiction. And <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, because they've had to manage so many details in their minds. Now, a lot of authors do use notes and so forth, but uh, they tend to know it very well because they spend a lot of time. Likewise, read a book. Read a book that's going to exercise different parts of your memory. It's going to exercise all parts of your memory, but you're going to want to um, uh, think about your memory as you go through the book. And notice, like, when you lose details, why is that? Do a little bit of self-study. Do a little bit of self-study. And also go for a walk. Uh, one of the things that you can do to improve uh, memory and, and particularly short-term memory processing is go for a walk and pay attention to the world. So get rid of the apps. I walk around all the time without uh, anything in my ears, without anything, just me. And I often do my Sanskrit recall of what I've memorized and often just do nothing and just notice the world and notice details. And you'll be able to actually exercise your all of your memory. But I think you also can exercise your short-term memory because you're practicing something that we're going to talk about in a second, which is real short-term memory comes from focused attention. Focused attention. So what happens when I walk into a room, memorize 20 or 30 names? What happens when... Um, someone's memorizing a deck of cards in less than 20 seconds or less than 17 seconds. What's happening is that they are using memory techniques, but they have very, very focused attention. They're paying attention to the information first so that they can encode it. And so one of the things about walking and why I find it so useful, and I'm confident you will as well, is it's a kind of meditation. If you get rid of the apps, if you get rid of this, oh, better check my stuff. Um, oh, no, 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 no. You're just breaking your attention. You need to leave it behind, nothing in your ears, and just walk, right? And so meditation plus mindfulness plus memory training will create short-term memory power, true short-term memory power. And, uh, you know, you don't have to be a meditator because I find that memory training is very much like meditation, but it would really help to have additional memory training that involves, so quote-unquote, quote pure meditation. And the reason is, is because it will create more mindfulness, which allows you to pay more attention in the world. So I want to catch up with some chats here. Thanks for popping them in. And thank you for uh, all these wonderful questions. Keep them coming. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Get uh, subscribed to this channel if you aren't already. Leave me a comment in the chat. And if you're watching the replay, you can also always get involved with the uh, discussion and I will answer you there. Um, let's see. So, Sophia. Hello, Sophia. Thanks for saying hello. Great to see you. Christos, what's the fastest way to learn Chinese grammar? Uh, okay, so maybe I will uh, share something with you. Grammar in Chinese, grammar in anything, doesn't matter. It's, grammar is grammar. And uh, yes, they're different from language to language. What's the fastest way? The fastest way is to memorize sentences that are examples of the grammar that you're looking for and then to make sure that you're doing lots of speaking. So let me just, excuse my reach. I was planning to do this a different day, but uh, I'll share this with you now. Speaking of apps, if you're gonna have this uh, stuff in your world, um, I suggest you get on with a language learning speaker and, uh, and you say stuff like this. And then later I said, uh, <laughs> So I said, my, my tones are really bad today, sorry. <laughs> but then I get a response. Anyway, I won't go through the whole thing, but he's just like, He's like, they're, they're okay. Uh, your tones are fine. Uh, and then he just said, keep practicing. You're getting better and better. And so what that is, is constant exposure to the language with a speaking partner and, uh, you know, memorizing the stuff and then having new phrases, new terms and doing it every day, every day. And so, um, uh, Chinese class every day and then just look at certain things like do you know all the pre pre uh, prepositions for example and then uh, memorizing some examples with them so I hope that helps you out there uh, Christos with your question about Chinese grammar but this app is WeChat and uh, 
find yourself somebody who would love to WeChat and WeChat every day. And then you can listen back to what they said. You can transcribe yourself what it is and uh, or get help with a transcription and then memorize the stuff. Really, really powerful. Learning a lot that way myself. All right. So Rash says, hi from France. Thanks for, oh, neurogenesis. We read that one before. Uh, need some more details on what you mean by neurogenesis. Jindra says, hi, Anthony. What do you think about applications for short-term memory on computer? Uh, like with Jonathan Levy. I'm not sure. What, I mean, he got rid of the apps at some point, and I'm not sure the whole story behind there. But uh, in general, if you're doing short-term memory with apps, you're probably not helping your short-term memory in a way that is practical and meaningful. The whole point is, is to get off apps. You're never, ever going to be in a situation where you need to memorize someone's name and you're like, hold on, I need an app for that. No, you want to be able to just look them in the face and say, oh, your name is Patrick or it's Robert or it's Martin or it's Mungo. You know, I met a Mungo one time at a presentation and that threw me for a twist because I was like, I never heard this name Mungo. And then I had to think, oh, OK, monks playing the game Go. Right. Uh, and sometimes you'll get these names. Uh, sometimes you'll be in a room and I've been in a room with like five people named Christian. Which one's Chris? Which one's Christian? Well, you just you just deal with it <laughs> and you figure out these little fixes and solutions. And you know what? You make a mistake. That's OK. But no app ever helped me. In fact, it's the opposite. And on the episode with John Graham, if you go and listen to that, I uh, talk about how I was really, really worried about how doing some technological training of, of name memorization was actually destroying my skills with remembering roomfuls of names. And he was like, yeah, he could, he could understand that. Um, so that was cool. Cat Satan says, I am considering eliminating my smartphone from my life. Do you think that would be good for my productivity and life? Uh, well, that's a great question, uh, Cat Satan. And ultimately it depends. I mean, I can't, I can't answer, um, specifically what would be good for you and your life without knowing you hopping on a call or something to get into there. But um, uh, in general, look, I, I obviously haven't eliminated mine, but I'll tell you, this phone is really just for learning. It has very, very few apps on it. Um, it has the waking up app, uh, which sort of broke <laughs> the barrier and introduced a couple apps because then I was like, well, people keep asking me about what I would do as an app for the Magnetic Memory Method app. So then I started downloading a bunch of apps. And so uh, the Waking Up app was kind of a Pandora's box and I wound up with more apps than I wanted. And then I just ended up deleting them. But it was good because I studied a lot of apps, looked at a lot of apps. I'm still thinking about what could be the app and finding the truth of what would work. And so that's been an interesting experiment. But I... I just shared with you an example of how that I use this for a meaningful daily structured learning experience. And this is very, very important that, that you do as well without necessarily throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, I incidentally have a, another one of these and that is no texts, nothing. It's, it's just for writing. It's for reading and uh, for studies and so forth. So maybe just have two. Um, but at the end of the day, a digital fast is a digital fast. And so, uh, it, it's a bit frustrating sometimes because my wife and I go and we'll go to different shops in the town or, or whatever, and she won't be able to call me cause I don't have anything <laughs> cause that's what digital fasting is all about, but it's worth it. It's so profound to spend eight hours without any, anything, even though I don't, you know, I have it optimized so that these things don't interrupt me. I don't get notifications. It's still good to make sure that I don't even have the opportunity to look to see if I've gotten any kind of message from anybody for a good solid couple of hours away. And then sometimes we get home and I still don't check. I just go and read books and uh, away we go. Um, so Cat Satan says, yep, you got it right. Oh, right. Okay. So thanks for confirming that. Yeah. So that's a, just an example of how you can transcend short-term memory just by using these tools. Christos says, any words on ADHD? Some say there might be benefits to it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, life is what you make it, right? I They told me I have bipolar disorder, and for some years I let that really be an albatross around my neck that uh, that just 
just was destructive. Absolutely destructive, useless, not, uh, not pleasurable, not anything. But I was the one who bought into it. I was the one who let it become part of my identity. And I think it would be absolutely wrong to say that it somehow has benefited me. Uh, and I, I imagine it would be similar with ADHD. So uh, I'm not really sure, but if you want to hear my interview with Jonathan Levy about ADHD, that's on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. And uh, Christo says that you love authoring. Yes, writing is amazing. Uh, Kat Satan says, I work as an English tutor and I write some materials in both English and Portuguese. Great, great. Crystal says, walk is actually proven for improving memory, exercise in general. Yes. And you say, for me, I notice that when I don't have many things to remember, then I'm actually getting better at remembering the things I actually want to remember. Maybe that's what happens to people who use a lot of their phones. They have all these things to think about and, and memorize that might not really matter. Great point, Christos. That's exactly, that's exactly the issue. Um, the, uh, overwhelm of information is that we are spending more and more time on trivial things and less and less time on really big important things so one of the things you can do is just do a life inventory and this is something cat satan might want to do do a life inventory and just be thinking like okay so what am i actually doing write it down and then what do i actually really want to do and then spend way more time on the big things in life that you really want to do and much, much less time on the trivial things. Because whatever's going on with Joe Rogan is just, you know, great once in a while. But do you need to watch like the 43 commentary videos on whatever's going on with Joe Rogan? Do you really need to um, be on Twitter? Do you really need this, that, and the other thing? Like what is it that you really need? If you should be doing something right now, then uh, maybe you should get off this live stream and go and do that instead, right? Uh, because it's really, really important to be focusing on the big levers in life, the big things that get you the furthest, the fastest. So great point, Christos. I appreciate that very much. Vadim says, hello from Latvia. Uh, yes, do please go get some sleep, but thanks for saying hello. Cat Satan said, would listening to music while I go for a walk make me left, less focused in my life? Uh, I feel more focused when I just don't have anything bothering me. Go give it a try. I find that walking around with uh, with uh, nothing is a great way to be more focused. Christos, how many languages can you speak? Right now I'm focused totally on Chinese uh, and I'm learning Sanskrit, which I'm not learning to speak, but to, for chanting. And uh, I haven't been speaking German nearly enough lately. And uh, English, I'm very poor with English. I need to really work on that, of course. And then in terms of any of the stuff that I studied in university, it's been a long time, and those were never to be spoken anyway. So uh, the classical stuff that I looked at uh, in my PhD is is gone, and I, French is, is just totally off the radar. But if I ever wanted to jump back into it, I have the tools. I have the tools. All right. Sophia says, I love your method. I'm learning Korean and French. I got a lot of vocabulary from memory palaces. Awesome, Sophia. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, Werner says, I appreciated you telling your story of your beginnings in Toronto. Oh, thank you. Um, post a link to where you saw that uh, or uh, uh, if you have one. Um, Physico says, finished my work not much long ago, and now I saw your stream. Lucky, good day. Good to have you here, Physico. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, I saw a little question earlier about do I play music? Yes, I do. And uh, here's my baby. <laughs> uh, I play this uh, most often. And I really like the bass guitar, but I also play guitar. And I've written some songs recently that... Uh, I was able to remember, <laughs> thankfully, uh, because if you don't remember what you wrote, then that's very painful. And we heard that the last Metallica album, I guess it was Kirk Hammett, who lost all his recordings and couldn't remember anything. So the last album was uh, didn't really f reflect much of his flavor. So that's very risky. All right. So carrying on, real short-term memory is about focused attention. This is very, very important to understand. So let's do some memory exercises for short-term memory and stretching this thing that we're calling short-term memory. And I've already mentioned something, memorizing names. 
is hugely powerful, hugely powerful for one, paying attention to names, and two, working at this rapid encoding so that short-term goes into long-term very, very quickly. And you do it through focused attention and memory tools. So I would suggest for most people, they start in private. And there's a number of ways to do that. You can go on Wikipedia, press the random button until you get 10 names or whatever. You can um, go to IMDB and look up the cast and crew of movies. You can think about, you know, the top, 100 most important composers or poets or politicians or whatever. You could learn the presidents, for example. And then do it in public in two stages. So the first stage to exercise this in public is when you see name tags, just start memorizing them. And maybe in your memory journal, just make a private note of what those names were and test yourself. Test yourself. And uh, uh, that uh, will really, really help you um, in terms of just doing it privately so that you're not, you're not, you know, stressing yourself out. You're not associating stress. There's no stakes. You're, you can always win because if you get it right, you'll be like, yeah, that waitress's name was Julie. I got it right. Or if you got it wrong, you can privately just go, hmm, what did I do there that was wrong? So this is a very good exercise. And then you can do it more publicly and uh, maybe you go to a party, you meet people and you just memorize everybody's name. And then at the end you say, I memorized everybody's name here. And uh, would you like to see a little fun demonstration? And then you just name them all, right? Uh, and so I often, you know, people just know who I am when I go to these things. So it's just expected that this happens at some point. Um, but you can arrange it for yourself. Uh, and you know, if you make a mistake, no big deal. The, the number one mistake that I always have is that I'm quite deaf in this ear. And so I'll mishear names. Classic example is, is a Graham and heard it as William cause all the loud music and so forth. I share that example a fair bit. Um, but I've had other ones at presentations where I do the entire room. And uh, sometimes there are a lot of people from all around the world and I'll just mishear it and I'll still get quite close. I've never had anything where I was totally off the mark and it's just from practice. So the point is, is that you're practicing focused attention in real time and you're encoding in real time. Other examples uh, of exercises you can do, walk through the store, memorize prices. And uh, you can memorize playing cards. Why does this help with short-term memory? Because you're working with expanding how many cards you can do in a short period of time by focused attention and the use of the memory techniques. You can also memorize different configurations of your 00 to 99. So when we had that special K, K constant example earlier today, because I have the 00 to 99, it was like that. And here's the thing. I'm not sure now that I can get it back because I, I didn't do, you know, effective uh, thing, but it was uh, something like eight, uh, 99 times 10, nine special or K is the constant, something like that. Right. And uh, it's because of these images that are just layered out in space. So you can do that all the time. You can just get a bunch of numbers and, uh, and, and, and work it. Uh, physical says random, uh, name generator can help with names. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, cat Satan says, yep. Yeah, okay. So I guess I got it. It works. Hallelujah. And that's the thing that you'll feel as well when you get these skills. So that's an example of short-term memory working right now, uh, right in front of us. And I think that, uh, if that doesn't inspire you to master this stuff, I don't know what will. <laughs> it's very, very good. And it's very practical. And the more you practice, the more that you can, um, you can, you can get this going in, for example, for real deal stuff, right? Like I'm not learning that. So I'm not going to memorize it for the long term. If in the future you're like, Hey, what was that K is constant thing? 
probably not going to know because it's not important to me. It has it is of zero importance. Uh, so I'm not going to put it into long-term memory. Cat Satan says, never forget this content after this live stream. Yeah, no, uh, I probably will uh, because it has zero importance. But all the names of the people that I've memorized in uh, meetings and presentations and demonstrations I've given in Brisbane, I want to remember all those people because it is... Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's very, very important to do so. Okay. So those are some exercises that you can do that will change how you think about short-term memory. They'll train you to pay more attention in short blasts of time to information. So you can encode it and go like that, just as we've done today. And you know, another thing that you can do, I haven't been doing it today, but one of the things you can do when you join me on these live streams is you can memorize the names of the people as they're coming down the screen. So maybe consider that uh, as an exercise. All right, so what is the best and most practical way to practice improving short-term memory? Again, it's memorizing names in real time. It is the number one thing. If you need opportunities, meetup.com, many people have uh, have the opportunity to do this. Um, uh, you can, at the first day of school, practice it or as many days uh, as needed in order to memorize the names of all your new fellow students. Uh, I mentioned film credit, film credits in movies and so forth. Um, you can also memorize the points that come up in discussion. So we have a video on the channel with my good friend, William Gordon, where we talked about the fist. And uh, if you haven't seen that, you'll, you'll want to check it out. Um, cause I, I teach him this idea of the fist that helps you remember things that are coming up in conversation, uh, repeat the details to ensure that you've understood them. If you're going to use this and just encode everything. And I was thinking in the uh, back catalog of the magnetic Mary method podcast, we had Jim Samuels on the show and he has this really great book, remind yourself better memory, lower stress. And he talks about memorizing things that happen in arguments point by point as they're happening so that you can refer back to people what it was they said, how they said it. And I found this very useful throughout life because sometimes I do find myself in situations of confrontation and simply because I can remember what it was they said with some shocking detail, some shocking level of precision, then it's very, uh, and as long as you're calm and you do use it in a calming way, it's very easy to say, well, the specific thing that you said here was A, B, and C. And uh, I have an interview with Jim Samuels where he shares more about that on the podcast. So you can go and listen to that. And I'm pretty sure I have the link in the description below. If I remember to put it there, I think I did. Um, so that's another thing that you can do to work on your short-term memories. Just really pay attention to what people are saying and encode the points that they're saying. And it doesn't have to be for long-term retention of what they said, but just as a practice while you're doing it. This is a great way of increasing your focus and really being more connected with people. Because one of the problems that we have is a lot of people are messing around with this thing while they're talking to other humans. This is not good. This, is, this doesn't honor people at all. So um, do not uh, do that. <laughs> Put it away, focus, and really pay attention. And then encode. Work with your memory. Short-term, mid-term, long-term memory. Work it. Work it very, very, very closely and specifically in that in that uh, session. Uh, thank you for all the comments and questions coming up. Good to catch up with them here in a minute. Hit that thumbs up if you're just joining us. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And uh, if you have questions, that's great as well. Um, pop them in. We're going to talk also about some exercises for long-term memory stretching. Who here would like some of that? Let me know in the chat as I take a drink here if you'd like some uh, discussion of stretching your long-term memory. Let's hear some uh, interest. Or does the evil Dr. Forget have control of your soul? I have frozen you, my friends. Let me know in the chat if some long-term stretching would uh, do you some good. And I'll catch up with the chat questions here. Kushal says, Sir, can we learn reaction when... How can we learn a reaction with uh, ethylene dialide is heated with alcoholic potassium hydroxide followed by sodamide giving acetylene? All right, so that uh, is very interesting. 
Um, what you'll need to do is make sure that you have a very, very solid memory palace practice, and then you're going to want to decide, do you want to use horizontal uh, approach or do you want to use some of the other techniques that uh, are available for that? And you're essentially going to have a chain that you follow throughout a memory palace. And uh, you're going to need to encode each and every one of those words. And then you're going to need to do it in such a way that your magnetic imagery is helping you understand the actual actions and reactions. So is heated is like an application of an action. And uh, then giving acetylene is going to be the thing that uh, is the reaction. So uh, that's what you need to do. And then you need to make sure you use proper effective recall rehearsal to make sure it gets into long-term memory. And I would use the big five of learning as part of that. Physical says, can we do faster mental calculations using a PAO? Oh, that's a good question. Conceivably, uh, I will think about that and maybe do some experiments. Um, but I haven't done uh, much mental calculation, so I really can't answer that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, conceivably, depends on what kind of mental calculation you're talking about. So uh, Christo says, how would I use a mind palace for Chinese vocabulary and or grammar? I don't understand how to do it. Christo is great. Um, so basically, what is it that you don't understand? Uh, there's a, th that's, that would be interesting to know. Have you taken the free course? Do you have a memory palace network? Do you have some understanding of what we're talking about with association? Uh, given a number of um, uh, uh, examples of association today. Um, and so you're going to need to, um, you know, think about what you, what is it that you don't understand? I, I, I'm kind of, I want to avoid learned helplessness here also, because uh, some people, they say that they don't understand, but they actually have taken the training and they just haven't done anything in the training. So when understanding actually means they haven't done anything, then that's where we need to start. So the start is make sure you've created memory palaces. Start with one, but for vocabulary, you're going to want multiple. And one of the things that you can do with vocabulary is you can actually work with pinyin and the English alphabet and a memory palace network. So that's what I would suggest. That's what I've done. There's, I can't see any sense in doing it any other way, although some people do it in different ways. And uh, uh, really, really be specific about what you don't understand because this is simple. Create memory palaces, learn what association is, organize the vocabulary that you need, memorize it, then memorize phrases around the vocabulary, then make sure you use proper recall rehearsal to get it into long-term memory, and then make sure that you use reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And you really do use only one app, which is the app that enables you, like I showed you earlier today, to um, on demand say things into a device uh, like this. And then you get back, oh, no. See, he just encourages me to keep on learning. And then you just keep going day after day after day. And your scales, your, your memory palace network scales, the amount that you put in it scales because you go from vocabulary to sentence, vocabulary to sentence. And then you start to be like, and then you get back, and then you go, oh, I didn't understand that word. And now you have a new word based on your actual journey, your context, your, your, your life, your interests. We're talking about philosophy now. We're talking about meditation. And uh, as you just heard yesterday, I was like kind of tired. And so I just said, hey, my tones are not that great today. <laughs> it's like, no, they're fine. You know, just keep going. Keep practicing. You're getting better. So uh, there you go. Um, so Eris says, says, yes, physical says that would be awesome. Erner says, long-term is my motivation to get into this. My goal is to memorize the main topics of each chapter of the Bible. Excellent, Werner. I'm thinking of doing a workshop just for scripture memorization, actually, because uh, I'm doing so much scripture memorization myself, and it's quite fun and uh, very delightful. Cat Satan says, how much time does it take to finish your paid course? Uh, that's a good question. Basically, every person who, uh, who takes it completes it at a different pace. We have people who can finish it in a weekend. We have people who can finish it in a day. We have people 
who go and then if they're learning a language uh, like Eldon Clem, do a thousand words in a very complex language, in his case, in just six weeks. Um, uh, Amanda Markham did 200 words in 10 days. It's really up to you. And it depends on your goal and your, your wherewithal, who you are, what you're like, are you going to take action? And uh, that, that, the answer is up to you, but it can be that fast. So hope that let me know if you have more questions around that cat Satan. But basically, just dive in. There's nobody who shouldn't be able to get done the main part of it in a, in a weekend, and then by a week later, be accomplishing some major memory goals. So Physico says mental calculations add, subtract, multiply, and divide. All other calculations come from that. All right. So thanks for that. I'll look into it, and uh, let's get into some long uh, term memory. So we've got memory exercises for long-term stretching. So foreign language, vocabulary, and phrases, scripture, poetry, quotes, speeches, song lyrics. These are all things that you're going to need your short-term memory attention and ability to focus to be really, really sharp in order to get to these sorts of things. But these things are also going to help with that short-term memory, uh, paying attention and you're also going to want to um, have these longer, bigger projects so that you have something to look forward to over time and that you're able to really practice with a variety of information. So I highly recommend that everybody do some language learning. Everybody do some scripture or poetry or long form, textual verbatim memorization, song lyrics, whatever. Everybody do something with numbers. You can combine numbers with scripture. So in, case, in Werner's case, um, I keep changing between Werner and Werner. Uh, let me know which one you, you prefer. Uh, <laughs> um, if, if you keep changing um, these different uh, kinds of disciplines, you'll find, or, or you rotate through them throughout the day, you're going to find that you you realize that the technique is exactly the same, but there's little fine details that change. And each time that you add a new discipline, the previous disciplines get stronger and stronger. So it really makes sense to work with all these things so you can see how and why they are the same, but why they're different. And uh, develop, develop. You'll develop by tackling more of the arts and ultimately you want to see it as zen archery so the archer picks the arrow up perfectly knocks it into the bow perfectly draws it back perfectly releases and it perfectly goes to the target which is the memory palace sticks it's there when you need it that's the kind of thing that you're doing uh, in your mind so this is really really important so um, there's some other important memory tips that you're going to want to cover as well that'll be good for both short and long-term memory. Sleep well. Sleep without devices in your room. Have a computer curfew. It's been one of the number one things for me, for my health, for my happiness. Device off, not in the room. Stay up all night if you want, reading books, uh, but not devices. Eat memory-friendly foods. Very, very important. And especially avoiding memory-destroying foods. And here's something that we don't talk about enough but we really need to talk about a lot, which is socialize often. Be with other people and be with other people as often as you can. Speak with them. Pay attention to them. Pay attention to what they're saying. As we talked about today, one of the best things you can do to really exercise that short-term memory is to pay attention to the names of people and then the details of what they're saying, right? And even if you don't memorize it forever, just memorizing it for a little while will exercise that ability to pay attention and encode. Pay attention and encode. It's very, very important. So to conclude today's uh, session, I've got some questions here coming up that were sent in advance. Um, don't get hung up on the terminology. Short-term memory, work in memory, long-term memory, it doesn't really matter that much at the end of the day unless you're truly interested in it. Now, I am personally interested in it, so I will be talking about this. Let me know in the chat if you're also interested in more of the terminology you'd like to get into some of this. I'm going to do it anyway, but I'd be interested to know who is uh, who is uh, interested in that as well, and uh, maybe we'll accelerate or decelerate depending on the interest, but just don't get hung up on it. 
I find that it does help my practice to know more of the memory science, but not in a point to getting hung up on it. And you want to practice all aspects of your memory. So we talked about spatial memory, autobiographical memory, episodic memory, figural memory, semantic memory, etc., etc. Essentially what we're doing is we're taking semantic information and turning it into episodic imagery. Um, and that's really, really important. But you've got to balance encoding and decoding. So there's arguments if you get into the scientific literature. Oddly enough, these scientists usually say that they never use the memory techniques. So um, w w their comments need to be taken in that in that uh, um, in that regard. But uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to uh, look at all of the kinds of memory together comprehensively and are we encoding enough and are we decoding enough? Are we encoding enough? Are we decoding enough? All right, Cat Satan, the value of K, let's see. So it was K is constant, then there was eight, nine, nine times, I guess it was 10, nine. Was that right? 10.9. I think there was a decimal somewhere in there. I'm not sure where the decimal was. Um, but uh, yeah, we want to we want to balance encoding and decoding because a lot of people will spend way too much time on encoding and not enough on decoding. Or people will really, really spend way too much time on decoding and they won't enough on encoding, even if they're really good on encoding. Um, so, uh, and have two kinds of memory exercise. Have the short blast with cards, with names, with uh, all kinds of stuff, and then have longer, big memory projects. All right, so let's see here. We've got some questions from uh, people who submitted them in advance. If you have questions and you want to submit them in advance, let me know. Um, probably next time we're going to cover uh, a topic that I will announce on the community tab, and then you'll have an opportunity to... Uh, uh, you know, just submit your questions in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm watching the chat here to see if I got it right. Cat Satan says you got it right. Great. Reclaiming Life, just stop by to hit thumbs up and say hi. Whoa, great to see you. Uh, thanks for saying hello. Always good to see you. And uh, you might want to check the replay here because you guys have been testing my memory and Cat uh, Satan threw one at me and it looks like I got it right. Uh, except for the comma, uh, but uh, I didn't memorize it in the first place. Um, but good to see you. Thank you so much for saying hello. Cat Satan says, what are my thoughts on fasting? I fasted yesterday. I fast, uh, I try to fast once a week. I took about a year off fasting and then I started to think that I really need to get back into fasting. Um, sorry, Marichella, I missed a, a previous comment of yours. And that is because I don't really know how to scroll back through. Oh, here we go. Let me see if I can find it. Where are the Facebook comments? All right, so you say, Marichella says, I like short-term and long-term memorization. The only thing I do not like is I forget the other stuff I need to do because I am focusing on only one thing. Do you know about the translator Travis, and do you recommend it? No, I don't know about Travis. Uh, do let me know more, please. Um, and you say, you do not, you forget the other stuff because you're focusing on only one thing. Um, yeah, well, I mean, hopefully these tips today will help you. Working comprehensively is one of the best things to do and to have a short-term memory practice and a long-term memory project. And you say that you like new terminology to increase my vocabulary. Encoding and decoding it is new for me because I do not uh, do it. Um, yeah, so, well, basically encoding is a fancy word for create imagery. And... Uh, then decoding is a fancy word for what was the imagery you created. So when Cat Satan is asking me, what is it that the K is constant was? And I'm thinking, okay, so Shiva ate 99, the Pope, and then 10, Taze Me Bro, and then 9, Brad's Up. I'm decoding what I encoded. So I encoded Shiva, I encoded uh, the Pope, and then the times the Pope actually became the time symbol when Shiva was throwing him. When I'm doing that, I'm decoding. That's what that's called. Um, uh, and if you do decoding in real time, like I was a little bit slow there, I think, but 
that doesn't matter. <laughs> if you do decoding enough, though, it'll go into long-term memory, and then it'd just be blah, 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 whatever that was, right? So you're anytime you're using memory techniques, you are doing decoding and or you're doing encoding and decoding. And the problem is, the point of all this is, is that a lot of people focus way too much on one and not enough on the other. So that's really, really important. Um, Alcal Alcalinas asks, when you say no devices in bed, is Kindle e-reader okay? If it's a device, no. Nope, 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 nope. Get a book. You don't have to take my word for it, but if you do, I'm sure your life will improve. Uh, but thanks for that question. But this is my dogmatic, hard line, no, 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 a thousand times no. Our brains evolved over a long time, and we're not used to sitting there with any sort of digital light. I like to go to sleep shortly after the birds go to sleep, and I wake up when the birds wake up. So I miss out on a lot of things, actually, as a result. Like, I'd love to go to uh, some Zen training, some Zen courses here in Brisbane. Um, but they start at 7 p.m., and I'm usually asleep by 7 p.m. or, or 8, 8.30. And uh, then I'm up with the birds at 5, uh, sometimes earlier. And it's beautiful. It's, it, it, you miss out on some things socially, but at the end of the day, the way, it feels so good. It feels so good. Now, let's see here. So Kushal said, how can we visualize? We went through uh, that, and basically I was glad that somebody put in some, uh, some examples. And uh, by the way, Werner, uh, or Werner, uh, so I don't know, when I, was, when I lived in Germany, we pronounced uh, all Ws with a V. Um, but uh, let me get to your question here. Let me know if you're German uh, or if you actually are pronouncing it Werner, what you prefer. That was what I meant to ask before. And you asked, do the silly and exaggerated images drop off after a while? And will I be able to recall also without the aid of the mnemonic? Well, that's a question that you've got to answer in your own practice. Some people, those images stay forever. For me, usually they're gone uh, relatively quickly. This is a challenge that I have in the book that I'm writing because I want to give the longest, most extended set of examples that I've ever done, but I can't really remember most of them. <laughs> so I have to like invent new ones. And then I'm thinking, well, that's kind of inauthentic. So I'm just going to have to write. Some of these are what I actually use, but other ones I don't really remember. So mine fall away. And that's never, a, not really a problem. Because the examples don't matter. What matters is that you have the skill, right? And if the images stick, then don't see that as the problem. Don't see it ever as a problem. It is a wonderful, wonderful testament to everything working perfectly. Om. Thank you. Uh, shanti, shanti, shanti. It's a miracle. It's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Some people turn that into the enemy. It's not. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Then see if you can just double down, compound, build into it with the new stuff. If it fades away and you have the target information, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful no matter what. All that matters is you get your target information back, that you are actually accomplishing your goals. And so uh, when you ask, well, well, uh, you know, will I be able to recall without the aid of the mnemonic? That's for you to explore, to find out. That's the beautiful part of the adventure. I never know when my images are going to stick and when they're going to fade. That's part of the adventure. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. All right. So naptime gaming. My biggest question would be how you feel long-term and working memory works in dreams, especially as you are more aware of dreams, even in non-lucid versus zombie dreams that you aren't in control of at all, that most people say they have all the time? Great question. Interesting. Now, I'm not a sleep scientist, uh, so I really don't know what those terms would be like for someone who studies sleep. That would be interesting. But here's the thing. Lucid dreamers, and certainly in my experience with lucid dreaming, they're not really in control. Uh, it's not really about control. Um, I think that people who frame lucid dreaming as uh, being in control of your dreams 
are being a bit misleading. Um, Romina is here. Hello, Romina. Good to see you. Um, wonderful. Thanks for saying hello. But yeah, we, uh, I think that at least in my experience and in what I've heard from other people, you have a very limited sense of agency. You have the experience of agency and you can do things at will and so forth. But I do not think that uh, that it's quite what, what it doesn't really deserve the word control. Choose Werner. I don't, I don't know if you speak German or not, but uh, if you do, then uh, uh, ich kann Deutsch. <laughs> uh, but back to naptime gaming. Basically, when you learn how to remember more dreams, it may be that this focused attention thing is happening. And I hadn't really thought about it, but I do have a course on remembering more dreams, and it actually works. It works for me. It works for the people who take it. And we've had many interesting success stories. And the best part is, is that people find new memory palaces in their dreams through a process of uh, recovery. And that's very, very important and powerful. Um, so one of the things that you want to consider is do you want to just practice remembering your dreams and give up the terminology? Uh, because what would it matter at the end of the day if it was long-term, short-term memory, if you just remembered more of your dreams? I had a really interesting dream last night. It was all in Germany, or, or a kind of Germany, <laughs> a dream Germany, with many these these bizarre German train stations with multiple tracks. You may have seen them, uh, where they just have tons and tons of tracks that are coming in from all the different destinations and where, where they can depart from. And uh, something about this bizarre alien had come and created a new disease. And it was using the train system to spread the disease. Really wonderful dream. <laughs> Very interesting. All right. So uh, we'll think about that nap time gaming. But thank you for the question. And uh, I'm going to get some more water going here. Sevink asks uh, what does what does improve short-term memory does reading a book improve short-term memory hope to catch the live stream well, i hope you caught it as well or you're able to watch the replay because we asked about this yes i do believe that short-term memory can be improved by reading and the way to do it is to really focus on um the the experience of reading and notice when you drop details. Notice when you lose track of where you're at and then work at focusing on how that you can get back on track and not lose track. So there's a number of things you could do. Uh, I've read out loud quite a lot to hold my focus. And that's been tremendously powerful at different times in my life. Also, when you lose track, don't judge yourself, don't punish yourself. Just go back and see it as a... Uh, an opportunity for wonderment to think, wow, what happened here? Um, what happened? Really, really interesting. Just to, 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 to use it as a point of self-inquiry. What is this experience of forgetting? Why does it happen? How does it happen? Try to track back the moment and really sort of psychoanalyze yourself and maybe even use some of the tools of self-inquiry that have been so powerful for me, which is like, to whom exactly was this forgotten? And then try to find that person that it happened to. Uh, that's kind of a little bit more abstract, but it's a great exercise of focused attention. Because the more that you try to find who you are, who it exactly is that is experiencing the world that you're experiencing, you can increase your uh, mindfulness. And you can increase everything. Like when you're reading, to whom is this information actually being presented? There may be a variety of different answers that come to you, but they're all interesting and they all help you really have a different experience of yourself and perhaps a, a much improved one. All right, so Cat Satan says, the weirdest dream I had was a cat walking on floating tubes in the sky. Wow. Cat walking on floating tubes in the sky. That reminds me of a dream I had where I was walking on, a I was walking on the telephone lines over this highway totally deserted highway in the desert never been to nevada that i can think of uh, but it was kind of like nevada the way i imagined nevada would be 
and uh, I just fell and bam onto the highway and then I woke up in bed. <laughs> it was really wild. Kyle's here. Hello, Kyle. Good to see you. Thanks for saying hello. Have you or could you use lucid dream practice, real life skills, maybe giving presentations? Uh, do you mean giving a presentation in a lucid dream to practice giving it in real life? I suppose you could. I've never done that. My experience of, of lucid dreaming is that you're not really in, in control. You have a sense of agency. And so, like, for example, one of my most profound lucid dreams, I just mentioned one. I was actually pretty lucid, but I was, you know, not able to continue walking on this line and I fell. Um, and then I woke up because it was so real. It was the most real situation walking on this telephone line in this desert thing. And then bam. Um, and my sense there was that I couldn't stop myself from falling. And I, I was really, really had the agency for my footsteps. I was really, really in control, in control of this. Um, but other ones, you know, I remember uh, one lucid dream in particular where I actually, this was during a period when I was regularly journaling my dreams. And I got up and I went to the bathroom and journaled my dreams. But the bathroom was completely different and it had this curved floor and I was rising up as I was writing the dreams. And uh, it is, I just... I couldn't stop myself from falling down. Uh, and then other lucid dreams, like there's often falling or flying somehow in these dreams. Uh, being in a spaceship some one time too, I remember it was like, wow, I'm lucid, man. Whoa, yeah, I'm totally in control. No, I wasn't totally in control. I was actually given agency over the flight of this spaceship and I couldn't control it properly. I was just flipping all around and, and uh, it was just... It didn't end well. <laughs> so I this is this is generally my experience of lucid dreaming, um, uh, and when I talk to other people, they they usually confirm that actually it's very much like real life. You just have a set of parameters in which you have agency to act. You have an act of will, but not free will. And uh, since free will doesn't exist, that makes a lot of sense. Um. Let's see here. Uh, Cat Satan had asked how long it takes to complete the master uh, class. And uh, I should say that actually it will take a little bit longer these days because I've added a new course. And uh, for those of you already in the master class, if you haven't taken it, we've been getting great feedback from people who have. And uh, visualization mastery is an additional training about the different levels of visualization that we mentioned today with a number of experiments. Uh, sorry, ex well, they are experiments, but exercises that you can complete and uh, highly recommend going through that as soon as you can. And if you are going to be new to the master class, complete the master plan, complete the uh, study guide, and then complete the exercises. Maybe complete the exercises first. This is on the exercises page. Dive in and, you know, don't just don't just take the course. Apply the course. Apply the exercises. All right. So David Russell says, if you don't walk the line, then it is a hard road. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, Jonathan says, do you think Badley's working memory model is accurate? At the end of the day, great question, Jonathan, thanks. At the end of the day, I don't think it's the nature of science to, uh, to put an end to these things. Um, and so really, its description is never accurate because science is not about accuracy. Science is about confirming the uh it's confirming or uh, affirming the validity of claims so this is quite an old model uh of working memory and uh you know as we talked about today some of these terms really have been challenged by some of the memory competitions and so forth so i don't know i have to look more into it at the end of the day but Basically, this idea of um, all the kinds of loops and all that jazz, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't really know enough about it. 
uh, to, to, to speak about it, but we can definitely look deeper into it if that would be something interesting to you. I made a call earlier asking for people to say if they're interested in memory science, and uh, one person said no, and so <laughs> don't need the science, Mr. Space, I think that was, who said uh, don't need no need for terminology. So uh, if you're not interested in the science, then I, you know, I won't put that much time into it, but we could definitely, if there's enough interest. Who here would want some uh, more memory science? If you'd say loud and clear, then I might do it for you. And perhaps we could make a video just about um, working memory and and there's 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 newer things uh, on the market, so to speak. But science really is not so much about accuracy. It's about effective demonstrations uh, by presenting evidence that support claims. And so, yeah, I guess accuracy is involved there, but um, it is uh, not to be eternally accurate. They, they should be open to and encouraging new evidence that supports it or that we need to, to redefine it. And so really it's just a lack of budget. I, I, I think a lot about some of the memory tests and memory science that I've seen, and I think they're often asking the wrong questions, and there are better questions to ask. Um but I'm not sure I'm going to go and get a, another PhD, <laughs> although it might, in uh, neuroscience so I can run the exa experiments that I think should be run because really that job would be creating endless budgets uh, through writing grant applications. And, you know, the traditional university system, who knows where it's going to go, but I think I lucked out and hit it at a very, very good time that is currently uh, experiencing a lull. All right, let's see here what we got. Um, so, Mr. Space says, One time I dreamed about playing guitar in space floating. Wow, amazing. <laughs> That'd be cool. Physico says, Strange experience. I can control any everything in my lucid dreams. I just don't know what to do much and end in a white void. All right, so maybe you can uh, follow up with Kyle's question and... Uh, and See if see if you're able to go and practice the magnetic memory method or a speech or something in your lucid dream space. Mr. Space says, "Yay for science!" Um, but I said, "I thought I memorized or I saw you. I thought I remembered you saying to me, no need for terminology. Terminology would be lots for uh, <laughs> lots of science." Uh, David Russell Thalamus. <laughs> great, great. Does that mean you want more memory science? Mr. Space says, yeah, for science, contradictory a little bit. Please, more memory science. A new video on it would be the best. All right, memory science. We'll see what we can do. I think I need a little bit more interest than that. Who else wants some? Can we get some more people here uh, who are interested? If not, no problem, no problem. Um, Mr. Space says, it all depends. All right, I like that thalamus, David. I got to remember that, thalamus. All right, so still coming up on the show, I'm going to do a mega review of the Dr. O. Bruno first. You can remember it. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed to this channel, get subscribed. Hit that thumbs up. Always, always be prepared in the chat. Let me know if you have questions for the next time. The Bruno first thing is coming up soon. And uh, really always enjoy meeting with you all. Uh, I want to say a thank you, as always, to Maricella. And if you want to support this show, you can grab some swag and I'll send you a video. But the best way to support the show is, of course, to get the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass. Thanks to Barry with his cup there. I'll send you a video if I see your image with one of these cups. And uh, that's from Adolfo. And then Christian, he was here earlier today. There he is with his shirt. You can also get a shirt and I'll get you the video. It's a very special video for people who support the show. And uh, again, though, the best way to support the show is by being in the master class, getting some results, and sharing your story with us so that we can rid the world of the evil Dr. Forget. But of course, I always want to take a moment to thank our very special people. And so thank you to everybody, Barry and Maricella and uh, Christian and Adolfo and 
you know, there's many, many more. So many more. Thank you, thank you. Um, David says, what do you think of the keto lysis and its mental impact? So I don't know in what context you're uh, speaking about, but uh, if you're talking about keto diets or that sort of thing, give me some more details. Um, as uh, may or may not be known, very general questions can only lead to very general answers. And uh, I want to be specific to what you're talking about. Um, and keep in mind that I am not uh, any scientist in that sense, despite having my PhD. I'm not even really sure what uh, is going on with my computer right now. I'm trying to see if I can find some details here, but it's not quite working. All right, so something is really up here. Wow. Crazy. Mac, Mac, Mac. So David says, is the brain being fed by ketones rather than glucose? <laughs> I really don't know. Um, but... Oh, uh, i.e. brain being fed by ketones rather than glucose, suggesting it's beneficial in dementia patients' memory. Uh, you know, it would be really great to have uh, some people on the podcast who can speak to that. So, yeah, sorry, I saw is, but you had i.e. Um, I'd like to definitely speak with people on the podcast who can, who can speak to that. I don't really know. What I can say is that I have fasted. I find a benefit from fasting. I eat a very specific diet that's very strict to deal with chronic pain issues. I'm not able to eat all of the memory-friendly foods that I'd like to eat. But at the end of the day, having an absence of brain fog is tremendous. Um, and so I will look into this. And you're probably right, David. I would find it fascinating. The question is always to, you know, have people who can really speak to it properly. Jonathan says, I'd definitely be interested in some of the memory science. Is there a model which is more up to date? I know the multi-store model was outdated by Badley's. Oh, Jonathan, there's so many, uh, there's so much stuff coming every day. Um, if I wanted to do a memory science show, every day I could do something on uh, new things in, in memory. Um, but as I hope to express in today's uh, stream. What we're really focused on is improving our memory. And so what is it about the model you would like to know? And why, why would I be the person to speak to it? You know, um, I don't know that those things really matter to pay attention to information, encode information, and then use the tools to get it to long-term memorization so you can improve your life. That's really the, the goal and the focus here. So if we were to find a better model there, the question then would be, how are we going to use that to convince people to use memory techniques to improve their life? And when you look at the use of science in things like encouraging people to stop smoking, it doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, you can demonstrate all of the scientific terminology and all the cancerous terms and all the photographs and stuff. It doesn't really work. So um, I need to, when I spend time and energy on these things, I need the, to really, really uh, figure out how that they can help people in practical ways to encourage them to use memory techniques. And really things like what Christian is doing and why I'm so grateful is he's memorizing poems and he's putting videos out there sharing how he memorized poems and the, the datedness of Badley's model and so forth. Those are topics maybe for a different uh, channel, although I may do more on memory science. I'm not saying that I won't, but uh, it's just, I'd be curious what it is that you're searching for. And if what you're searching for aligns with that goal, then that would be very interesting to talk about because one of the reasons why I don't talk to that many memory scientists, I t like uh, Gary Small is 
is one of the best out there because he actually does encourage people to do memory training, to actually go out and do it. Uh, but so many of the memory science books, they're just people who are like, well, we don't actually use these techniques. That's not a great sign. That's not great at all. Um, we, we want more people who use memory techniques uh, being scientists and then making better research projects because they're guided by their practice or they have the insight of their own practice. So that would be good. All right. So Physico says he likes the Atkinson Schifrin model. I adapt it to my life and things go well. Tell us more, Physico. How do you adapt that model to your life? I want to hear what exactly that means in practical terms. Pop that into the chat if you, if time and memory allow. Okay. Not sure why my keyboard here isn't working. But it really sucks. <laughs> Really crazy. All right, so I'm not going to be able to look that up, but uh, I want to hear more about the application of this model to your life. So you say, well, Cat Satan asks, how do you organize yourself? How do I organize myself? That's a good question. Um, I think we missed a question from you earlier. How can one deal with vices? Well, then, sorry, I missed that earlier, Cat Satan. How can one deal with vices is basically the same thing. I'll start by saying this. It doesn't matter how I organize myself. What matters is how you organize yourself and what you do. So routines, habits, whatnot. I spoke earlier today about, um, about that. But, you know, going to sleep with the birds, waking up with the birds, that's been very, very helpful. No computer goes on without having uh, having done some meditation, doing some basic stretching, uh, gratitude journaling, and no work starts without working towards a goal. So I shared with you some of my Chinese uh, processes today. Sharing meals every day with my wife, very important. Writing every day. Um... Gym three times a week, music pretty much every day, get out the guitar, that's always fun, um, and meditating as often as possible, usually about three times a day. Uh, that's very, very important. Physico says, I don't think convincing people of memory techniques is very different of convincing them not to smoke. People get addiction to smoking, but I don't think they get from not using a memory technique. Okay. Um, well, I'm addicted to using memory techniques, that's for sure. Every day, I try to memorize something. And uh, it really depends. But again, it's that balance between um, encoding and decoding. So... Do you have to encode every day? Well, no, not every day. Is it beneficial and useful to encode every day? Uh, yes, but sometimes you also just want to leave some time free to uh, reflect on what it is that you've memorized. Um, other times you barrel forward a little bit more. One of the things that, that I find really helpful to do is... Um, is to encode more than you actually are going to recall. So, for example, um, yesterday when I encoded uh, a passage from the Upadesa Saram, I went a little further and encoded anyway, knowing that uh, it was just going through the motions. And so you get a kind of leapfrogging effect. Uh, and that is quite useful for me for long like long form memorization of long form texts. So Cat Satan says three times a day. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that any person would benefit from three times a day meditation. Um, even just 10, 15 minutes, five minutes. Meditation is very, very powerful. And the more you meditate, 
the more you're going to um, absolutely experience incredible outcomes. And essentially, when you get into it, it's kind of like when you learn about remembering your dreams. The division between dreaming and being awake and falling into fantasy while you're awake starts to, to fade away. They start to become very much the same thing. And it's very similar with meditation. The more you meditate, the less likely you are to leave meditation. You will. Anything that has a beginning ends. But the more mindful you are, the more you stay in a state of mindfulness. So, well, Physico, then you can send an email and we can feature it on a future uh, session. Um, and you say that you fuse it with some techniques that I taught you. Great. Well, I'm great, gr grateful for the opportunity to teach. And um, I guess that's just about it for today. Let's uh, go back to our... our um, uh oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Something is wrong with my keyboard. Sorry, guys. I want to go back to our. <laughs> wow. I guess we're not going to get back to, uh, to my summing up slide. But to sum up, basically, we want to think about short term memory a bit differently. We want to shift our attention to focusing on focused attention and we want to then really pay attention to the incoming information and encode as much as we can and then get it into long-term memory so this is uh, basically what we want to do and things to work on are memorizing names for sure as the big thing and then you can do cards and uh, numbers in configurations of your zero zero to ninety nine, so that was great. Thanks everyone for being here. Cat Satan says I'm going to a meditation center, and that helps because I am more accountable. Awesome, that's great, and that's a great point to end on. If you need accountability, get it, get it, because whatever's holding you back in life, if it is lack of consistency, then that's the problem you need to solve. You need to be consistent. If you want to get these techniques working for you, be consistent. Without consistency, it's not really not possible to get the results that you deserve because you're a very, very incredible person. And I appreciate the time that we could spend together today. And consistency is what I need to work on too. So I have a, <laughs> a book draft that's due. And so I need to go and be consistent about working on it which I'm going to do. And so, Marichella says, you're talking frequently about pain. Are you suffering a lot? For example, I just recuperated from a cut in my right hand thumb doing a salad on January 30th. Um, I suffered a lot uh, to dress, shoot, eat, drive myself, but I'm getting better. All because I want to do the fast things, but I learned the lesson very hard. Yeah, well, I've cut myself badly too. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. There's a big scar there. I got a scar here. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not doing too bad. I just, I have uh, issues with chronic pain. And uh, thank goodness for meditation and how that it enables me to not really identify with it. Um, which is a blessing for sure. So if you're interested in talking more about meditation and how it can help you um, remove yourself from the flesh and be more involved in the self, let me know and uh, we can talk more about it. So Cat Satan agrees, execution and consistency is everything. Thank you very much. You're an awesome person. You're an awesome person too. Thank you for the kind words, Cat Satan. Always good to see you here. I uh, hope it's not f with such a big pause next time and uh good to see you physico thanks for being here thanks marichella thanks uh thanks everybody i have no idea how many people are here or how many people were here or how many people will be here next time but always a pleasure and come get the free course if you haven't taken it before 
Obviously, these sessions make a lot more sense. If you have at least done that, they make even more sense. If you're in the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass, we do have that new um, free course, or not free course, but new free upgrade in the form of the Visualization Mastery course. Have you taken it yet, Maricella? Let me know. Jonathan says, thanks. Uh, really interesting. Thank you, Jonathan. Good questions, Mr. Space. Thank you. Alkalina says, stretching every day helped with my back pain. Thanks very much for the excellent videos. Thank you, Alkalina. And uh, yeah, we're going to do this again. And come visit me, as always, at magneticmerrymethod.com. Um, my keyboard is not working right now, so I can't put that link in there for you, unfortunately. But it's magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT, or just go to magneticmerrymethod.com. And uh, all things being equal, going to have a new podcast this week. And new blog post with the podcast, and a new video coming soon. And I uh, look forward to getting that out to you all. Thanks again for being here, and until we have a chance to speak again, keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye.